What's up everybody? It's CJ from Dream Diecast Cars and on this episode I'm going to be doing a review of this Bentley Continental Flying Spur made by Mini Champs. I got a suggestion to do this car from 111 Tom Bomb. He actually asked me to do a Bentley GTC Continental, which is basically the same thing, it's just a convertible two-door version of this car. And they're both made by Mini Champs, so the models should be relatively the same. And I'm sorry to everyone, especially White Knight 2001, because he asked me to do the Rolls Royce that you see in the background. And the reason that I'm not doing that is because I'm thinking of ordering a green screen. So I want the video with the Rolls Royce to be really special because it's my favorite car. And in this review, I have some questions that need to be answered. First, is this car worth the $180 that you find it for? Second, is it built better than this Mercedes SL65 AMG, which is also made by Mini Champs? And third, why the heck is it so darn heavy? No joke, this is by far the heaviest diecast car I have. Every time I pick it up, I'm surprised at how heavy it is. Now let's start the review, and it seems pretty reasonable to start at the front of the car. Over here, you'll notice the Bentley logo, the B with the two wings coming off of it, and it is copied very nicely. Below it, you'll see the grill, which has real metal right here, but a not so nice looking black background. Of course, it does look pretty realistic, and I cannot say it looks bad at all. It looks pretty good. Below it, you'll see the license plate, which says Bentley on it. Then even farther down, you'll notice these grills, which are copied very nicely. Now obviously, before we move, we'll have to take a look at the lights. These lights were described by James May from Top Gear, and he said that they look like their eyebrows were singed off. And I can kind of see how he'd think that. But we're not here to criticize the car, we're here to criticize the diecast car. And the lights on the diecast car are copied very nicely. They look just like the ones on the real car. These little rings going around them that lead all the way back to where the actual light is. Looks great. The side of this diecast car doesn't disappoint either. To start with, the wheels are copied very nicely. Not that there's too much to copy. Right here, there's a B, which is another Bentley logo, and I'm pretty sure that the wheels are made out of metal, but they could be plastic. If they are plastic, it's a very nice plastic. Then there are the disc brakes, which move with the wheels, which is very realistic, and the brake itself right there, which doesn't move with the wheels. Really, other than that, there's not too much more to say about the side. It's great. I mean, they haven't done anything wrong. There's just not much to see. Right here, there's this little silver thing that goes around the windows, and the windows themselves are copied nicely with a nice clear plastic. Right here, you'll notice the rear view mirrors, which look nice. And then this little silver line which goes down the car and that's copied nicely as well. Nothing to complain about on the side of the car. Then at the back of the car you will once again notice the Bentley logo. Same exact one is on the front and once again it is copied very nicely. Another license plate that says Bentley on it. A diffuser down here which is on the real car gives it more grip. And two exhaust pipes which are copied very nicely. Then of course there are the brake lights, three of them actually, which are also copied very nicely. You've got the actual lights that would be inside the little red cap over the brake lights. And over here you can tell that this is not just a sticker. Then there is of course the coolest thing at the back of the car, 
these two white reverse lights. They're so cool. Now there's only one more thing to do at the back of the car, which is open on up the trunk. From a side view, and I know it's hard to take this seriously, it's very interesting to watch the trunk open. You'll notice as it's opening, there are these little strips that come out right here, which look very realistic. And something that I like is that they add these other things back here to help the trunk stay up. To help explain what I'm talking about, I've brought in this 118 Koenigsegg CCX made by AutoArt. You see, when you open up the engine cover on this, you'll notice that it's only supported by four little strips. Two in the back and two farther in the front, well, from our perspective. And that looks very realistic, but the problem is they're so weak and flimsy that they don't keep the engine cover up. In my last video, I said that this engine cover wouldn't stay up, and it hasn't. I've only gotten it to do it once. Now let's check out the Bentley's trunk. When you look inside the trunk, you'll notice that Minichamps has done a very good job. There's some sort of hard material right here. It's not completely hard, and it is very nice material. And then some felt down here and up there along with this little light and the felt is also a very nice material and when you pull up this little tab right here a tool kit is revealed underneath now before we look at the interior there is of course one more thing that we need to see which is the beautiful W12 power plant that the Bentley offers. Now one thing that's actually very funny about this die-cast car is the box which talks about the real car and the box says that this die-cast car copies the V8 from the real car but the real car doesn't have a V8 and you can see right here that they've copied a W12 engine. Um, I've done my research, I went online after that, just to make sure that there wasn't one year that they made a V8, and it's been a W12 consistently, so I don't know what they were writing there. And now, let's take a look inside. Down here, you'll see another Bentley logo, same as the ones on the front and the back. Except this one is a sticker, which is a good thing, because that's basically what the one on the real car is. And then down this little strip right here, it says Bentley. Oh, uh, it's actually like, it's not an engraved thing. It's, it's not indented either. It pops out, but it's not a sticker. Down here, there is a warning sticker, which would be on the real car. It doesn't actually say words, I don't think, but it looks very realistic. Right here is uh, some sort of bottle. It's probably the wiper fluid. Then there are the two V6s that are combined to make the power and they say on them one of them says 6.0 liter which is the 6 liter sign I'll take a picture of it let's put that up on the screen then the other one says twin turbo let's put that up on the screen and one last thing that's good about this engine is that aside from right here you can see that mini champs has made it go down farther you can see other stuff in the engine now we can open up the door and take a look at the best part of this diecast car. The interior. At first glance, you'll notice that Mini Champs copies a lot of wood trim. And you'll notice that they go really in depth down to a lot of buttons. There's the gear shifter, some dials up here. Steering wheel is copied very nicely. Felt down here in the footwell. Then the two pedals. And some buttons to adjust the seats. On the door, you'll notice a handle. Some controls right down there. This little slot. A speaker. An air vent or something of that nature right there and a door handle up here. 
On this side, you'll notice the glove box, some more wood trim with an AC vent, a screen, which is right through there, which would include the navigation, radio, stuff of that nature. Up there, some AC vents. Then a rear view mirror, right there. Along with some buttons on the ceiling. And some air vents, I think, along with some lights. On the door sills, you'll notice that on both sides, the word Bentley is written on it. Now into the back. Back there, you'll notice some seat belts, which are copied nicely and are actual strands that can move. Seats back here, some felt along the ground. Then, when I open up this door, I'll be able to point out some more AC vents and buttons down there. Mini Champs replicates the, a little magazine holder there and there and two tray tables. Once again on the back door you'll notice some handles, door openers, and some speakers with a little compartment down there. And now we have some questions to answer. First, is it built better than this Mercedes SL65 AMG Black Series, which I didn't think had great build quality? And I can answer that in one word, yes. The first thing you'll notice is that the Bentley rolls very nicely, which is something that isn't very important when you just think of it right off the top, but when you go deeper in, it really does mean something. Let's look back at the SL65. The suspension on the diecast car is not built very nicely, as you can see. The wheel right here basically touches the wheel arm, so it doesn't roll very nicely. But the Bentley has better suspension on the diecast car, which makes it roll very well. And something that I would never do with the SL65 that I can easily do with the Bentley is pick it up, shake it around. You don't hear any loose parts. Now to the next question. Why does the Bentley weigh so much? And I still can't figure it out. And to help me explain how heavy the Bentley is, I've brought in the beautiful Rolls-Royce Ghost and one of my favorites, the Mercedes S63 AMG. Also, just to throw this in there, the Ghost is made by Kyosho and the S63 is made by AutoArt. Now let's look at the weights, and we'll start by pulling out the S. The S class contains beautiful detail on the inside, and something unique to all of my model cars, it has leather seats. And you think that would add a lot of weight, those two things combined, but actually, this diecast car only weighs 1.7 pounds. Moving on to the ghost. This diecast car contains some of the best detail I've ever seen and has real moving parts on the inside. The engine cover is made with some sort of stainless steel and you think that all these things would add a lot of weight but once again this diecast car weighs 2.8 pounds. Now to the Bentley. About the same amount of detail, maybe a little bit more than the S-Class. No leather seats, no opening parts on the inside. But this diecast car weighs 3 pounds on the dot and I have no idea how it's so heavy. Now don't get me wrong, I mean I'm not complaining. In fact, all that weight makes it feel very expensive. But I literally have no idea how it's that heavy.
Not a clue. Now to the most important part. Deciding whether the Bentley is worth the price. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that this diecast car is amazing. The detailing on the inside is really great. The detailing on the outside is really great. But $180 seems like a little bit much for this diecast car. Now to my final grade on this diecast car. I'd have to give an A, and I know I've been handing out A's lately, but this diecast car really deserves it. I can only find two things wrong with it, and that is one, it costs a little bit too much, probably should be worth about $20 less, and two, these front wheels don't turn very much. And if that's its biggest problems, well, then it's just a great car. Well, that'll wrap up this video. Tune in next Model Car Monday for more stuff like this. Be like 111 Tom Bomb and leave a comment below on which diecast cars you'd like to see. Click the like button and subscribe. See you next time.